everyone and welcome to day number 11 of Cavemas. I'm a little bit sad about that. One of the main questions I get asked and it's ongoing and has been since I started my channel is the question, is Scrollerbox worth the subscription? And last year I addressed that in a monetary sense. So if you'd like to look at the actual value of some of the items that have come in the scroller boxes, you can check out that video and I'm going to leave it in the end card for you so you can hop over and watch that after you've watched this one. This year I am addressing the same question, but I'm looking at it more from a practicality point of view rather than the actual value of each of the items that come in the box. So I've kind of designed this scoring system and and I'm going to take a look at every single box that has come in 2019 and give you an idea of how much of it I actually use on a regular basis, how many items I've kept a hold of but not necessarily used all the time and also a list of the items that I have done away with. Now in the video I refer to it as having given the items away and I'm just using that as a catch-all for items I have donated or put into the cave stash for you guys to buy as well. I'm going to kind of score each box as we go along and then once I've gone through that I'm going to have a quick chat about it at the end. The idea for doing this video is to help educate you guys on my habits and how I perceive the items in the box and it's just to help you make a decision if a subscription box is something you've been thinking about investing in for yourself. So just bear in mind as you watch this, I am at the stage where I do have quite a lot of art supplies and the reason that I have given a lot of these items away or put them into the cave stash is because I've already got something similar. It's not necessarily that I don't like the item or the item isn't high quality. What we're going to do now is get to top down view and I'm going to go through each box individually and show you how much or how little I use each of the items. So let's get going. So first up is the January scroller box from 2019 and that was the one where we had the selection of pro markers and a few fine liners and that sort of thing. The, uh, this was one of my favourite scroller challenges to do. Here's the, the picture that I did. This is now available as a print and a few other things on my Redbubble store. I'll leave the link to that in the description for you if you want to go and check it out. Actually one of my favourite pieces of art of the entire year. So out of what came in that scroller box, I ended up giving away the pro markers. I didn't use them again after doing that scroller challenge because I have a vast selection of Copic markers. So it's something I already owned. I gave it away. I do still have the white pit pen and I use this occasionally. Uh, I can't say it's a regular feature in my repertoire but it does come in handy sometimes for just for the nib size compared to some of the the other white pens that I have. So the, this is this is still here but it's just occasional use. The pencil that came in the box was a Faber-Castell 2H graphite pencil and it was from the 2000 series. I have a full set of those pencils already so I gave that away to Mr. Gem. Then we have the microns and I use these all the time. So there was a brush tip one and the other size was the 01 which is a 0.25 millimeter line width which is pretty tiny and these are these are a regular feature in most of my artwork so these went into my, my pen pot that sits in my desk because it's something that I use every time. So this box on the whole for me was a win in terms of the usability of the items after we actually received it. So in February's box, the main feature of this box was the Karen Brush Marker Pros. I absolutely love these pens and use them fairly frequently despite not really being an ink artist but they are water soluble. So much so that I was prompted to go out and buy myself uh, a bigger set because I loved them that much. So the ones that came in the original scroller box, one of the colours is uh, this lovely sort of teal green colour and I've more or less used all the ink in it. So these, these are sort of in rotation with my newer ones because I bought these for Inktober because I wanted more colours but I have used most of the 
pigment in the original pens from the original set so that was a definite win for me. The Fibralo felt tip pens that were water soluble from Karen Dash, I actually kept a hold of those for a long time, they are now gone because I never used them again after the scroller challenge. The pencil and eraser I'm just counting as one item, I gave that to Mr Gem because again I have a plethora of pencils so that disappeared too. The Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint is very similar to the Wink of Stella pens in their makeup and I'm just going to show you one of those just now. Um, this is Wink of Luna so this is a, a sort of similar idea and this is basically, a, it's like a, the same as a water brush but this inside is coloured and it was a very delicate jade shade that I got and when you put it down on paper it was so delicate that if you mixed it with water there wasn't a lot going on. I think it would be nice for hints of a background on a colouring page. Again I found I wasn't using it so I ended up giving that away as well. The other thing that came in the box was an Artline fine liner. It was a pretty standard fine liner. <sighs> Gave that away as well because I've got a million of them. So literally the only thing that did me any favours in the February scroller box, despite being a great scroller box, was the Karen brush markers which made me purchase more so. Ding ding ding. <laughs> And on to the March scroller box. So the main feature in that was the Statler Super Soft Coloured Pencils which I have ended up with another pack of thanks to Upcrate. I sold my original set of these because I have more pencils that I know what to do with. These aren't particularly great quality and I really just didn't have a use for them. They do show up quite nicely on black paper but that wasn't enough for me to want to keep a hold of them. Next was the blender and burnisher set. I actually gave them away as a set but that's only because I have several of the blender pencils and a spare burnisher anyway. I use the blender pencils all the time and never use the burnishers so rather than just keep it you know as part of like the six that I already have I thought I would give them away and um you know, give someone else a chance to use them. These work really well with Polychromos pencils as well as Derwent pencils and I use a lot of Polychromos. So yeah, I find this quite handy for colouring pages. Next up we've got the Progresso white pencil and this is something that I didn't think I would use. I'm not a huge fan of Kohinoor products. I've found myself using this quite a lot and it is a supply that I've ended up with uh, duplicates of on several occasions. This is the original pencil so you can see that I haven't used it a whole lot since March but it is something that sits on my desk and I do find myself reaching for it quite frequently so that was definitely a win for me. The pencil sharpener I've also kept and I use it occasionally. Uh, this is one of the ones I like to take with me when I'm traveling and it's just because it's got the two separate holes and it doesn't actually take up that much space so yep that's good as well and it's a good quality sharpener and the blades are really easy to change. We've also got the sketchbook that came in that scroller box. As you can see it is blank but I am keeping this for a specific purpose. Some of you that watch my unboxings regularly will know that I have a separate swatch book for testing out the products. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, I am coming to the end of this one so this is going to be the replacement so although it hasn't been used yet this will be in regular use. The other items that were in the box was a big ch uh, chunky yellow pencil, it was like a triangular barrel. That went to Mr Gem, again absolutely no use for it, I've got more pencils than I know what to do with when it comes to graphite. And there was also a, a V-ball pen, kind of like a fine liner type pen. And it was just one of those items where there was nothing particularly remarkable about it so I ended up giving that away as well. The April box brought us a set of pastel Ecoline markers and I think they got a bit of a bad rep because the paper that was provided for us didn't really mesh well with the pens. I didn't enjoy the pens at all and unfortunately once again the main featured item in the box I ended up giving away but... I did keep a hold of the Unipin fine liners now rather than the standard black fine liners that normally come in these boxes there was a grey one and a slightly paler grey one and surprisingly I use these a lot and again this is an item that sits on my desk. I also retained the needed eraser because it's something that I use all the time and it's really good to have a spare one and I tend to have them sort of dotted about my house just so that I'm not carrying the same one about and it's getting dropped and covered in dog hair and all those really yummy things. <laughs> And once again, the pencil went to Mr. Gem. So not a lot to be said. It is good that I've retained some of these items and I am using them. But it, so far, the theme from the boxes that we looked at is that the main items are actually quite disappointing or something that I already own.
Now just bear in mind that I am someone that has a lot of art supplies so for those of you that maybe don't have as many art supplies or you're quite early on in your art journey these things would all be great for you but just for me personally it's not something that I have pursued or found that has been put into daily use. So moving on to the May box, saw us get a set of paint pens from Pilot. Now for the purposes of scoring on this one I have split the paint pens up individually and I'm just about to show you why. I did give away those paint pens apart from the black one. The reason for that is in the actual scroller challenge I used a lot of black for the background and there wasn't a huge amount left in it and I didn't want to give that to someone with you know very little paint left in it so all I've done is switch this out for the black Posca pen that I normally use just to use this up first and it is nearly empty so that's something that I have used a lot so obviously I've given a point for uses all the time for this particular pen and the other ones I've put in the, the giving away pile and again it's the same thing I've got quite a large range of Posca pens it's not an item that I use frequently but uh, they are in use so I just felt that they would sit there for long and weary before they would actually get used because Posca pens aren't something I have to replace on a regular basis. The other thing that I kept was this Molotov liquid chrome pen. It is my absolute favourite and while it doesn't have a lot of practical applications I do use this at every given opportunity so this has been a, a regular feature mostly in my sketchbook just because I like to make things shiny but I absolutely love this item again even if it's not an everyday use item and it's never going to be just because of the characteristics of it but it's incredibly good fun. That's a massive thumbs up for me for that. The other thing was this Milan eraser that came in the, the box as well and I really like this eraser and I use it quite a lot and I've actually got a second one now as well uh, so I was really pleased with this one. And once again the pencil that came in the box, there was a Milan pencil that came in the box and I did actually have that on my desk up until recently and Mr Jem, my husband, came and stole it because he was looking for a pencil. How he needs a pencil when I've given him so many I'll never know but there you go. So this box gets, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 7 because I was using the pencil up until Mr Jem stole it. Onto the June box which brought us a delightful set of paints and one of my favourite boxes of the year. I have quite a few sets of watercolour paints now. At that time I was just into watercolour no more but I already had a travel set so again it's something that I gave away because I already owned it. The other things that came in the box were these um, polychromos pencils. There was one brown and one green and these are things that I use more or less every day so these went straight into my reserve pile. Uh, I'm actually using the one that came in the scroller box. I had to replace my green pencil so this, these have come from my pencil case but this is the one that came in the scroller box so I'm already using that even though it was a reserve pencil. So they were a win for me very much. The other thing was this Statler Norris erasable pencil. I have no idea why I, why I still have this. I now have the... I, I was using the Prismacolor Colouries pencils and it's very difficult to get those in the UK at a decent price so I think I was kind of holding on to this thinking that I might use this instead of it and I really haven't. It's something that I would use though and this is why I've kind of confused myself a little bit because it is something that I would use in my sketchbook but I've recently, uh, thanks to Upcrate, found the, the Colour Eno erasable pencils and they're like a mechanical pencil. I'm looking around my desk to see if I can find one. The place is an absolute shambles but I can't find one. Uh, yes, so I don't know if I'm actually going to use this or not. I weirdly want to keep a hold of it though and that's not like me so that says that it may come into play at some point. So we'll, we'll put this in the, in the pile along with the things that I have kept but don't necessarily use regularly. The other thing that came was a Posca pen and it wasn't this one. It looks remarkably like this but I had a finer point on it. I found with that white Posca pen that there wasn't much in the line width difference between it and this one and again I've got quite a few Posca pens so I decided to give that one away but it is something that I use regularly so I don't really know whether to give this a point or not. I, I suppose not because I gave the actual item away. I uh, kind of confused myself with my own uh, scoring system here. <laughs> so I'm going to give this box a, a 2 out of 4. In the July box came a much more unique and fun 
selection of supplies and again I really enjoyed this box and it is the only box of the year where I have absolutely everything. I did not give any of it away. The reason for that is I am not a painter and I'm especially not an oil painter. It is something that I want to explore a little bit more and because I didn't have any of these supplies I've kept them. So that was the three tubes of Cobra and this is water mixable oil paint so it makes it a bit more accessible. It's easier to clean up etc etc. The limited edition scrawler box paintbrush which I'm strangely in love with and I have no idea why. It would have been nice to have a smaller brush for the actual challenge but I really like this paintbrush and I've also still got the little scraper that you're supposed to cut up. In addition to that we did get a Derwent Graphic 2B pencil. I use these pencils all the time and I go through them like water you know like they're going out of fashion so I kept a hold of that as well this is not the one that came in the scroller box the one that came in the scroller box is long gone uh, but I am a regular user of that so top marks for this box for a supply that I never had I hadn't really used but I do have plans to use this in the coming year and explore oil painting a wee bit more so ding Yay! ding ding top marks for that one and on to the August scroller box and what a box easily my least favourite box of the year and that was because of the fine liner pens I just did not like them one little bit needless to say they didn't stay in the cave for very long the sketchbook that came the paper was fantastic in that and I gave that away purely on the basis that I have more paper than I know what to do with and I thought someone else could benefit from it especially with it being a high quality item so that didn't stay either once again the fine liner was completely unremarkable there was nothing wrong with it but I've got a bajillion of them so the only thing that has survived the onslaught is this Statler Mars Lumograph 2H pencil. I'm quite fond of these Lumograph pencils so I decided I would hold on to it. With it being quite a firm core they last ages as well so you can see it's still relatively new looking. So unfortunately for that reason the August box gets a 1 out of 4 from me. Heading into September we were back into the paint theme and we got these Viviva uh, watercolour sheets and they were great fun to play with and they were so bright and so vivid. Again I have lots of paint by this point and I just felt it's something that I wouldn't use on a regular basis and I kind of felt it was a tiny wee bit gimmicky but again it was it was nothing to do with the quality of the item it's just something that I wouldn't use and I knew fine well I wouldn't use and it would just kind of sit there and I'd look at it every now and then go oh look that's really pretty so I gave that away. I still have this Milan paintbrush. I freaking love this paintbrush. I use it all the time and I actually want to buy more of these of the same series which is the 611 series and I can't find them anywhere. So if anybody knows where I can buy these brushes and it is the 611 series specifically please let me know in the comments because that would be awesome. This item gets used probably more than anything else from any of the scroller boxes. It is a lovely paintbrush. I still have the Windsor and Newton fine liner that came in this box as well which might surprise you because all I've said up till now is oh they're unremarkable they're just a fine liner. I really like this one because of the tip on it. It has a really long fine nib and the end is very very soft and rounded and it's it, it gives you really good accessibility. <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous. But this is a really good item and I actually quite like the way that the line lays down as well. So this was a surprise win for me but I, I very much like it and I am using it quite frequently. It is quite a wide nib width as well which is something that I don't normally use but because of this pen it's something that I have been using more. So it's actually encouraged me to change things up a little bit so I'm really pleased with that. I also still have the mechanical pencil which is the Pentel Orens pencil. This is actually in the stash for anybody that would like it. The reason that I've put it in there is this is a hella expensive mechanical pencil. It's nice, it is really high quality. I don't think the recommended retail price is worth it so I'm selling it in the stash at a greatly reduced cost. I have got quite a few mechanical pencils and I've kind of got a favourite one and because you can refill it I didn't see the point in holding on to this so this is actually getting given away. So the September box is getting a two out of four from me. 
had to take a quick pit stop there but I did find one of my uh, Eno <laughs> mechanical pencils, coloured pencils so this is what they look like and it that is coloured lead to match the barrel and these are very erasable and I'm right into those so if you're looking for something like the Colourius pencils and you can't get hold of them these are a really good alternative. So on to the October scroller box which there was much fanfare about because it was the 50th box and that was the one that featured Rin from Drawing With Waffles who's a very popular art YouTuber and if you haven't heard of her where have you been? In that box we got our commemorative scroller box pin which you can see I've kept but it is still in its plastic and it's because I don't have a clue where to put it. The other thing that came in the box which was sort of the main feature was the fabled Copic markers and it came in this little doodle set. I have given this away as part of a giveaway for Cavemus. If you'd like to check that out I will leave the video for that in the end card so you can go and check it out after you've watched this. The reason I'm giving this away is the two Copic Chow colours, I have them in sketch markers so I already have those pens and I thought that would just be a really nice thing to give away to somebody who maybe hasn't tried Copic markers or maybe it's not within their budget. The other thing that came in that box that I have kept, yeah it's Lyra isn't it, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this is very precious to me as I said already I do keep a hold of quite a few kneaded erasers. I like this one because it's in a plastic box. I have three dogs and this keeps it clean and fresh and usable at all times so this is very valuable and I do use this rather a lot so that is a definite win for me also. The two other items that came in this box, one was a Derwent paint pen and I don't have it because it exploded on me, it ruined one of my drawings so it went in the bin and again there was a pencil that came in the box, Mr Gem got that, it's probably disappeared outside in his workshop. So overall not a bad haul to be fair but out of five items I actually only kept two and I only use one of them. So again, what seems like a great box, it is a great box, I'm not disputing that, they're really high quality items, but for someone in my position who's already got stuff, I haven't really kept much of it and it's the box itself hasn't been a whole lot of use to me. The November scroller box was a really interesting box and again more paint. We've had more paint this year than I have ever seen from a particular company and this was a great box. I really enjoyed it. The timing was kind of off for me though. In the box there was a set of gouache or they called it opaque watercolour. There was a whole other debate about that. There was a great range of colours in that box. I had recently just tried gouache and bought a buttload of them so and to be honest I didn't see much of a difference between the opaque watercolour ones that came in the box and the ones that I already own which is the Windsor and Newton designer gouache and they look a bit like this. So I decided to give that particular item away. Other things that came in that box, there was a Kum eraser which I still have and it's kind of like just in my reserve pile. I haven't used it since I did the scroller challenge but it's quite a good eraser and I like it because it's nice and firm so that's something that I will use every now and then without a shadow of a doubt. The paintbrush was the Van Gogh travel brush. It was awful. It kept coming to pieces but I gave it away as part of the, the set in the cave stash with the gouache paints because they kind of went hand in hand. Lastly there was also a 3B pencil which is a pencil that I would normally use all the time. I gifted that to my friend's little boy. He's just started getting into drawing comics and uh, he's, he's 10 so um, he's quite young but he had been using HB pencils so I wanted to give him something to play with that was a little bit new. You know try and explore different mediums so I gave that pencil to him to try out although it is something that I would normally keep. So although the November box was a great box it only gets a one out of four from me. You can see why I wanted to go through these month by month and explain a little bit to give you uh, you know enough information to make your own decision as to whether or not it's something that you would want to pursue or it was going to be worth your while personally. And lastly we have the December box which I still have sitting here right in front of me. I only reviewed this the other day. If you haven't seen the full unboxing again I will stick that video in the end card for you if you want to check it out in a bit more detail. So I'm really projecting what's going to happen with these supplies in terms of how much I'm going to use them and that kind of thing but I can take a pretty good educated guess at this point. So in this box we have the set of Faber-Castell metallic pens, really high quality items. However, 
already received these in an up crate box so that was kind of a, a bit of an accident so these will be given away because I already opened the set and this is actually set out of the up crate um, because I've taken them out of the packaging so the ones that came in the scroller box are in the packaging and they will be going into the cave stash in the new year so if you fancy those you can check out the cave stash the link for that is down in the description the other thing that we got was this lovely little Derwent ruler I love this this is right up my street and this is going in my pencil case and I will be using this frequently I've got a cheap crappy 15 centimeter ruler little plastic one this is much better I like things that are heavy and clearly of good build quality so I am in love with this and I will use it all the time who thought that something as simple as a ruler could be so great and so useful and something that will be in regular use the last thing that we got was the set of Derwent metallic pencils. Now, normally when I get selections of pencils especially, it's something that I don't tend to keep because I have a lot of pencils. These are absolutely lovely and I have a bit of a fascination with working on black paper and these come up beautifully on black paper. So I am definitely keeping a hold of these and I know that they will be used. I actually have a separate sketchbook that is just a black paper sketchbook because I like to, to draw on black paper that much and it's so nice to have pencils to do it with because it's usually something that's associated with inks or brush pens so I can I can guarantee that these are going to be used so that is an out and out win for me I haven't included the next item in the scoring because I haven't talked about the paper that's come in any of these boxes but also in here we did get this lovely pad of black paper and it is something again that I am just absolutely delighted with because it's something that I'll use so that was like a kind of bonus item so again this December box is a really good box for me it's something that appeals to me and although I have some of these supplies already I am actually going to use these which is a great way to end the year as far as I'm concerned so this box scores a 2 out of 3 for me and that concludes a full year of scroller box. So there we go, that is our 12 scroller boxes from 2019. In a perfect world we would want a perfect score and I would have kept a hold of every single item and used every single item in every box forevermore. So it is a potential score out of 55 and I just want to break it down for you in, in really clear terms here so you can see exactly how much of stuff I actually used out of 55 i gave away a total of 24 items so that is quite a hefty amount of everything that i've received however as i mentioned at the start of the video a lot of that is to do with the fact that i already owned those items or had something very similar and you're always going to get that with things like pencils because part of the idea of these boxes is you have a complete kit to draw something from start to finish so you are going to get a lot of pencils you are going to get a lot of fine liners and that's to do with the the actual makeup of the box and how it has been curated and I think it's really unfair to bash art subscription companies for doing that you are always going to have that element but what that does mean is I've given away 44% of the items that have come in a scroller box this year so that's something to think about I have kept a hold of 19 items. Now, these items are things that I don't use on a regular basis, but I have had a use for or plan to have a use for. So they're not necessarily in a daily repertoire, but they're definitely there and they definitely have a purpose, which I, is something I feel really strongly about when storing art supplies. So that works out at about 34%. So just over a third are things that are kind of hovering about, but not in everyday use. So last category then is there are only 12 items out of a year's worth of scroller box that I use on a regular basis. Now that's quite high considering the number of mediums that I cover. It would be different if I was just a pencil artist or just a, an oil painter or whatever. But the fact is that I am, uh, that's quite a cross section actually. Uh, so that's like 22%. So just over a fifth of the items are actually in regular use, which I find quite encouraging. And for a box selection that's been quite diverse this year, we've seen a lot of paints, which has been absolutely lovely. And I'm glad that Scroller Box have listened. I actually find that for someone that already has a lot of art supplies, I'm quite impressed with those figures. And it's really nice for me to be in a position where I can pass those on to other people. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. And if not, at least it's been a little bit interesting. I, I did want to make a, a slightly different video um, for today just to give us that nice cavemus variety. So I just want to 
to thank you very much for coming and hanging out and watching this video and I will see you tomorrow <laughs> for the last day of Cavemas and it's going to be a big video tomorrow so it's important that you find some time and pick that up because big things are coming. We'll see you tomorrow guys, bye for now.